Hello everybody, so I just wanted to make this quick video. Some of you may know that I enjoy to make videos about retro Apple products. So today we are going to be taking a look at and comparing the first four generations of the iPod Touch. Starting on the left here, we have the iPod Touch first generation, followed by, of course, the second, third, and fourth generations. Now, these are what I would consider to be kind of the classic iPod Touches. You can see they're all about the same size and, of course, all feature the iconic stainless steel design which as you can clearly tell can get extremely scratched up over time pretty much all these third generation is the best looking this fourth generation has actually been buffed out with some steel wool so it kind of takes out some of the scratches but I think just makes it look more dull and worse than it did honestly with the scratches all right so getting started here the iPod Touch first generation was released in 2007, followed by the second gen in 2008, third gen in 2009, and fourth gen in 2010. All were released in September of those years. Pretty much, they were all based off of the iPhone that came just a couple months before. Back then, they used to release the iPhones in like June or July, and then iPod Touches would come out in September. So the iPod Touch first generation has a 412 megahertz processor and 128 megabytes of RAM. This was exactly the same as the iPhone 2G, and even the iPhone 3G actually had those same numbers. The second generation iPod Touch was based off of the iPhone 3G, so since that pretty much had the same specs as this one, so did this. However, since it did come out a couple months after the iPhone 3G, it did actually get a couple extra things that weren't featured on that phone. They actually upped the clock speed on the processor from 412 to 533 megahertz, and you you will definitely notice that speed increase as well as you are getting Bluetooth 2.1 in the iPod Touch second gen um, compared to 2.0 in the iPhone 3G and speaking of which the iPod Touch first generation does not have Bluetooth at all other things it doesn't have that the other three have are volume buttons and they actually didn't have physical volume buttons on the iPod Touch until the second generation nor does it have an internal built-in speaker again you have to get the second gen or later to have that however these lock and unlock sounds kind of quiet um sounds like that you still actually get those on the ipod touch first generation they're just different so you can hear little clicks um there's not a speaker it's just a little buzzer inside kind of like they used in old ipods with the click wheel to make the clicky sound effects and things you have just a couple little buzzes and beeps that it can make um obviously you just can't play music through it you have lock and unlock and uh when you plug in the ipod to charge get a little sound effect there. It's kind of similar to the newer one. You also get some alarm tones on your clock. Here we go. So yeah, just a couple little sound effects that can make. Kind of sounds like an old school video game. Like I was saying, the second gen iPod Touch has a 533 megahertz processor, although it's the same one used in the first gen iPod Touch and the iPhone 3G and 2G, just overclocked, same 128 megabytes of RAM. Then the iPod Touch third generation was a more significant spec bump, even though it looks identical to the second gen. It gets the iPhone 3GS internals, which is a 600 megahertz processor, and that's 65 nanometers actually i think they made the one on the third gen ipod touch 45 nanometers so these two are 90 iphone 3gs is 65 and then the third gen even though it's the same processor and same clock speed as the 3gs it is a 45 nanometer process and then doubles the ram to 256 megabytes and the fourth gen is based off of the iphone 4 it features the new apple a4 cpu which is 800 megahertz it's not a huge difference from the third gen still features 256 megabytes of RAM, whereas the iPhone 4 actually got a half a gig. So while the second gen iPod Touch got some features that the iPhone 3G did not, the iPod Touch 4 generation, while it's based off the iPhone 4, it actually loses some of the things from this phone. It doesn't get the half a gig of RAM. It has the new Retina display. However, the one on the iPhone 4 is actually an IPS technology, whereas this one is TN. All of these panels are TN displays. So you don't get the IPS, so it doesn't look quite as good off access. Although I will say, the screen on the iPod Touch 4 generation, you will be surprised when you see it, because you don't expect something this old to 
have this nice equality of display. From straight on, it looks absolutely fantastic. They're still using the same pixel density screens on even brand new iPhones like the iPhone XR, 11, and the new SE. It just goes to show how good uh, this screen quality was. So yeah, those two things, it misses out from the iPhone 4. And then I believe, I'm led to believe at least, that the GPU in the Apple Touch 4th generation, while it is the same as the iPhone 4, and also the iPhone 3GS and the iPod Touch 3rd generation all use the same GPU. I'm led to believe that the one on the iPhone 4 is clocked at 200 megahertz, whereas the one on the iPod Touch is actually only 150 megahertz because you do see the iPhone 4 scoring slightly higher on benchmark tests for graphics. Just a couple of things that the iPod Touch 4th generation didn't get that the iPhone 4 did. The GPU underclocking is probably just due to battery life. This doesn't have a very large battery compared to the iPhone 4. I really don't know why they didn't put a half gigabyte of RAM into this one because that really would have helped because this thing struggles to handle iOS 6. The iPhone 4 actually was able to update up to iOS 7 Whereas this one obviously cannot, and that is due to the extra RAM and possibly the graphics. Another thing, like the iPhone 3GS, while it is based off of, or while the iPod Touch 3rd gen is based off of the 3GS, the 3GS can update to iOS 6, whereas this one can only get iOS 5. That one I really can't explain, like it's definitely capable of handling iOS 6 since it's the exact same specs. I think it just boils down to they only sold the iPod Touch 3rd gen up to 2010, Whereas the 3GS, they sold all the way through September of 2012, a lot longer, and they were kind of forced to, you know, give it that update, otherwise people would have been mad. Even the iPad first generation, which has the Apple A4 CPU and 256 megs of RAM, that didn't get iOS 6 either, it only updates to iOS 5. Again, no idea why, because that didn't get updates for very long, and it really could have handled iOS 6, I feel. Don't know why Apple chooses to do some of the things they do. Not getting iOS 6 could come down to, you know, both the iPod Touch third gen and iPad 1, have no camera, could have been something to do with that, although still that's not justified in missing out on that update. The iPod Touch first generation came out with iPhone OS 1.1 and can update to iPhone OS 3.1.1. Back then it was called iPhone OS and they didn't change the name to iOS until iOS 4. The iPod Touch second generation started out on iPhone OS 2.1.1 and updates to iOS 4.2.1. Third gen started with iPhone OS 3.1.1 and updates up to iOS 5.1.1. The fourth gen came out with iOS 4.1 and updates to 6.1.6. .6. The storage capacities that these iPods are available in. The first gen, you can get in 8, 16, and 32 gigabytes. Second gen, same thing, 8, 16, and 32. Third gen actually only came out in 32 and 64. Back in 2009 when this was released, they did make an 8 gigabyte iPod Touch, which people thought was the third generation, but it was actually just a revised version of the second generation that they resold, and they called it the MC model which has to do with the model number of the iPod. So the second gen is an MB. First two letters of the model number are MB. And you can see at the bottom the model numbers. So the iPod Touch first gen is actually starts with MA, MB, MC, and also MC. So for that um, revised iPod Touch second generation, the they changed the model number to start with an MC, like the third gen. And I think that change entailed a hardware difference, had like a different kind of RAM that was more secure to make it more difficult to jailbreak. But if you can see on the back here, the only physical difference between the second and third gen is that the capacity engraving is smaller and the 8 gigabyte second generation that came out in 2009 also had that smaller engraving as well as the text on the bottom here. There's less of it. So there's only two lines of text um, versus there's four previously. Same with the first gen. Just can't see it because it's so scratched. So yeah, just tiny little differences like that. Otherwise, these two are identical. iPod Touch first gen has a little more of a boxy design, a little more squared off, not as rounded. Although the interesting thing is the iPod Touch first gen is actually thinner than the second and third gen. It just doesn't seem like it because of its more squared off design. You know, this one feels thinner even though it's not because it's more rounded. And similarly, this little plastic window at the top which allows Wi-Fi to work through the metal body is more ovular, more rounded here. Whereas the first gen is just like a piece taken out of the corner. The iPod Touch second and third gen are all stainless steel and glass. Whereas this um, first gen iPod Touch has a little aluminum bezel around the glass. Which also extends over the headphone jack and the 30 pin dock connector. All these iPods have their headphone jacks and 30 pin 
connector in the same location as you can see, although the fourth gen iPod has a speaker cutout as well. And I mentioned that the second and third gen do have internal speakers, but they don't have a cutout, so the sound kind of just emits from the charging port. And it's not very loud and does not sound very good at all. It was definitely improved for the fourth gen. Looking at the top here, you can see the power button is on the left side in the first three generations and then moves over to the right for the fourth generation. Volume buttons are all the same on the ones that have it, um, except the second and third gen have a rocker, so it's one piece of plastic that just rocks up and down. These are separate, um, which I prefer. Already went over the design of the first and second generations. Fourth gen is kind of in between. It's somewhat rounded, but also somewhat squared off. Um, so you can see it has tapered edges. It's the thinnest of all of them and feels the thinnest and lightest. And obviously is the only one with a camera. They go from having no cameras on the first three generations to actually two cameras on the fourth gen. Everything's pretty familiar. But the interesting thing about the tapered edges is that when you're pressing the buttons, it doesn't really feel like you're pressing on the side of the iPod. It feels like you're pressing more on the back, which is kind of weird even on these ones while they're more rounded they have more of a side edge so it actually feels like you're pressing on the top buttons on the second and third gen are not very tactile at all and i don't like it there's almost no feedback feel very stiff so yeah i don't like them first gen i mean it only has the power button but it's still better than those ones and then these are still pretty bad um not very tactile but slightly better than before they all got the same sized home button and everything same location on the front there and um yeah this one just has a facetime camera on the back you have a 0.7 megapixel camera which can record 720p video and then on the front is a 0.3 megapixel camera that can record vga video use it for facetime the difference between the third and fourth gen ipod touches really boils down to the retina display and the video recording and facetime there's not much of a difference in performance while the ipod touch fourth gen can run ios 6 it's about the same performance or maybe even a little bit worse i'd have to say than third gen just because it has to push a lot more pixels and it really doesn't have much better hardware to help with that now the iphone 3gs on ios 6 feels definitely better than the fourth gen on ios 6 and probably about the same as ios 5 on the third gen but it is more smooth i would say like when sliding between pages and another thing, um, when you wake the device, it does appear just a little bit quicker than it did on iOS 5. And you can see it's the same as the iPod Touch 4 Gen. So they did make a little bit of optimizations in iOS 6 to make it feel more smooth and fast. But yeah, I would still say this performs better than this one. This, you will have a lot of stutters and things more so than the third gen. And swiping between pages, you know, on these two, feels about the same. Um, however, the 3GS feels more smooth. So I think it's just iOS 6 optimizations and you know, the fact that this just really can't handle it as well. And another thing I noticed is that the more icons you put on pages, um, the more stuttery it is to swipe between them. So you can see like this one, it has a couple icons on this page, but even if I like put another one over here, there's only a couple icons, so it's very smooth. Whereas this even, with just this many, feels a lot laggier. And this with full pages is still not the greatest, but iOS 6 helped a little bit, but it's about the same smoothness as having this many icons on iOS 5 and having this many on iOS 6. It does feel stuttery on both. Keep in mind that this third gen is actually jailbroken, which is why it has some of the updated icons from iOS 6 in the clock, maps, and settings. And I even added like a fake passbook that doesn't work so yeah it's not heavily modified also like swiping the notifications how you can see is quicker on ios 5 just small differences but yeah i feel like you know these both have the same graphics processor but the ipod touch has to push a lot more pixels so it will be stutterier i don't know if that's a word and the 3gs will have some stutters but it's not as bad as the fourth gen iPod Touch. The other differences, one you can clearly see is that you can set a home screen wallpaper on the third and fourth gen, whereas you cannot on the uh, first and second generations. In fact, this feature came out in iOS 4, so it wouldn't have worked on here anyway. The iPhone 3G and iPod Touch 
Second gen did not get that feature of home screen wallpaper, so it's still just black. The other thing is multitasking only works on the third and fourth gen. Again, was introduced in iOS 4. You double press the home button, but is not available on the second gen. And another thing the iPod Touch third generation added was voice control. So first seen in the iPhone 3GS, it made its way over to the iPod. Basically you hold down the home button and voice control, which was what was before Siri in terms of obviously voice control. Now the iPod Touch third gen didn't get a microphone. You had to just use one that was attached to your headphones. It didn't get a microphone until the fourth gen. And obviously it had to have one because of the camera. There are a couple features on the iPod Touch 2nd Gen in iOS 4 that were not supported on the iPhone 3G. Again, likely due to the faster clock speed of the processor. Using these both on iOS 4, you will notice a little bit better handling on the 2nd Gen iPod Touch. The animations are more smooth. Things just load a little bit faster. The first feature you're getting on iOS 4 in the iPod Touch 2nd Gen is Game Center. Came out on iOS 4.1 is only available on the iPod Touch 2nd Gen and not the iPhone 3G. And obviously you wanna have Game Center on the iPod Touch because it is more of a gaming device. People used it more for that back in the day. Could be due to the faster processor, I don't know. And then the other thing in iOS 4.2.1 that was added is AirPlay. That works on the 2nd Gen iPod Touch and not the iPhone 3G. And that could either be due to the better processor or the fact that this has Bluetooth 2.1, whereas this only has Bluetooth 2.0. Maybe that was required for AirPlay to work. Who knows? The displays themselves, the first three generations all look about the same. They all have a resolution of 320 by 480, which gives a pixel density of 163 pixels per inch. And then with the fourth gen has the retina display and that was quadrupled resolution. So it has 326 pixels per inch and a resolution of 640 by 960. Definitely looks a lot more sharp. All these three are about the same, I would say. Although the iPhones of the same generation, um, I would still say look a little better than the iPod touches. Can't see it on camera, but maybe just a hair um, brighter and more vivid than the iPod touches that came after them. I could be wrong, but they all, you know, all these screens on all these five devices have a little bit of differences, but they're all the same resolution and about the same brightness and colors and things like that. So it could just be variances from product to product. All these iPods have ambient light sensors, which even the newer iPod touches do not have. They got rid of that starting in the fifth gen. The other difference with the screens between the first three and the fourth gen, you can kind of see it on camera. These ones, the screen is very like gray when it's turned off. And that's because there's an air gap between the glass and the actual display. Whereas the Apple Touch fourth generation display is laminated to the glass. So it looks a lot darker when it is off and a lot better. Battery life on all these, uh, obviously not great on any of them. Probably about the same on all of them though. Just especially with all these aging batteries, it's not very good at all. But yeah, that is pretty much all I wanted to go over in this video comparing the first four generations of iPod Touch. So my favorite out of all these iPod Touches has to be the iPod Touch third generation. Uh, I just think it's so cool. And it is definitely the snappiest out of all of these iPods. It's kind of rare because people didn't really know it existed because back in 2009 when people were buying iPod Touches, they mostly went for the eight gigabyte model, which really was just the second generation that people thought was the third generation. And Apple did not do a good job of marketing that at all. So yeah, these are a little rarer and I just think they're really cool because I mean, it looks identical to the iPod Touch 2nd Gen, which is kind of sucky by now, but really a lot more capable than that one and is the most nostalgic to me because while I did not own one of these back in the day, it was the first like classic Apple device I purchased back in May of 2017. Before that, I had never really used iOS 6 and earlier, which is what I would consider the classic iOS because my very first iPod touch was the fifth gen I got in 2014. So I never really used anything earlier than iOS 7 until 2017 with this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video here today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will be making more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.